I'm Dr. Herbert Bailey, and this is my wife, Dr. Marsha Bailey. I'm known to challenge you in your faith, and she's known to encourage you never give up. But ultimately, we're here to give you practical steps to get positive results in your life. Heading in the right direction. Today, Dr. Herbert Bailey continues with Eyes Straight Ahead. The message translates to Proverbs 1, 10 through 19. The message translation. This, this would, this would, he's talking about being, about being careful who you hang around with and who you let influence you. This is what the message translation said. Proverbs 1, starting verse 10. Dear friend, if bad companions temp, tempt you, don't go along with them. If they say, let's go out and raise some hell. Would y'all put it up on the message translation so they won't think I'm cussing in church? <laughs> message translation, Proverbs, the first chapter, verse 10. Dear friend, if bad companions tempt you, don't go along with them. <laughs> okay, too small. If they say, let's go out and raise some hell, let's beat up some old man, mug some old woman. Let's pick them clean and get them ready for their funerals. We'll load up on total quality loot. We'll haul it home by the truckload. Join us for the time of your life with us. It's share and share alike. Oh, friend, don't give them a second look. Don't listen to them for a minute. They're racing to a very bad end, hurrying to ruin everything they laid their hands on. Nobody robs a bank with everyone watching. Yet that's what these people are doing. They're doing themselves in. When you grab all you can get, that's what happens. The more you get, the less you are. And it was saying, don't get deceived by people who look like they're prosperous, but it's not done biblically. It's not, it's not done based upon righteous principles. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. You've got to be real careful because, you know, you hear this all the time, especially teen teenagers. You got to be careful who your friends are. And people think it don't matter. And the Bible knows you got adults who still, still think it don't matter. And so the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Why does it say don't be deceived? Because there's an easy way you can get deceived in this. You think it don't matter who you hang around with, who you talk to all the time. Mother Betty used to say, if you got 10 broke friends, you're going to be the 11th one. Got to be careful who you're hanging around. New Living Translation says, don't be fooled by those who say such things, for bad company corrupts good character. You got to be careful who you're around. You got to be careful who you call your friends. The message translation says this, bad company ruins good manners. So if you're going to keep your eyes straight ahead and have the God kind of life, long good life, then God want, that God wants you to have, you're going to have to choose your friends carefully. Everybody say, I must choose my friends carefully. Now, David, he starts outlining some special criteria for his friends, some special prerequisites for his friend. Psalm 119, verse 63. New Living Translation says this, I am a friend to anyone who fears you, anyone who obeys your commandments. So David said, if we're going to run together, this person got to fear the Lord like me, and he got to obey God's commandments like me. Otherwise, that, that can't be my road dog, okay? We, we can't hang out like that if you don't believe like me and, and make God a priority in your life. 2 Peter 1 and 1. As Peter writes uh, his epistle, the second one, 2 Peter 1 and 1, he says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained, look at this, like precious faith. Everybody say like precious faith. 
with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He says, like precious faith. He's, you need to understand, he said, you need to be around people who operate in faith like you do. Now, you didn't, and this, now, in this, I'm not just, even though part of this is going to apply to, you know, you know, not being around sinners and people live, uh, you know, rat, ratchet lifestyles and all that, and you don't do that, okay? I said ratchet tonight for the sake of my young people. Got young people with me, so I got to talk like, I got to keep them involved with me. That's what, how they talk? They say ratchet. I would say trifling, they say ratchet, okay? He said, so, uh, but you also got to draw some lines in the church. Uh, I got to tell you all the truth. You got to draw lines who you, who you hang out with in church. You ain't, you're not expected to, you know, uh, we were in Orangeburg for the sake of all y'all who wasn't there. Okay. And we had a video of one of the new members talking about, this is just a wonderful church. So everyone is lovely. Everyone loves each other. Everyone is so sweet. Everyone is so kind. And I looked at the video. I said to Pastor Martha, I said, I hope he'll meet so-and-so. Because <laughs> y'all know we got some members, everybody ain't kind, everybody ain't sweet. Don't mean you're not saved. You're just mean. It don't, it don't mean you're not saved. You just walk around with a chip on your shoulder. And so, even in the church, you have to, you, you have to uh, be careful who your associations uh, are, even in the church. So, he says, uh, New Living translates that verse, says, I am writing to you who share the same precious faith we have. Now, if you're going to operate at a certain level in life, I'm talking about above average, and I believe it's the will of God for all of us to be average, above average, then if you're going to operate above average, you can't just hang around average people. If you want to operate above average, you can't, op you can't just hang around uh, average thinking people. People say, it don't take all that. Well, maybe it doesn't take all that for you if, you, if you're going to be average. It takes all that for me because I'm willing to do the work to have what God wants me to have. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 and 15. Now, Paul writes here, he says, now, there's an application of this to the world. But we know he didn't spend all his time telling us about not being involved with sinners in the world. In one place he said, he said you, can't, you can't just avoid all sinners, all fornicators in the world. He said, otherwise, you've got to be taken out of the world. You're going to have to have a personal rapture. He said, but he said, I'm, in many cases, he said, I'm talking to even people in the church. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14, 15, he says, be ye not unequally yoked with who? With unbelievers. Don't get yoked up with unbelievers. Now, again, a lot of this often, one of, one of the main applications we've had of this is when you, you younger people and you single people, when y'all looking to date somebody and go with somebody and looking for a husband or wife, all this, y'all know this stuff, all this goes out the window until you see somebody fine. Your criteria is he need to be saved. Oh, but he cute. <laughs> well... Save or cute? Save or cute? Well, if you're cute, I believe God will save them. <laughs> and all your prerequisites go out the window, okay, regarding spiritual things. Because you think it's not that important. That's because you ain't lived long enough. Because when the money's gone and the honey's gone, you, st you still need Jesus. Because if you got to Jesus, you can get some money and honey back. But if it's all based upon money and honey, okay, and feelings and looks. I told you, Mother Betty said, see, she's painting these pictures. She said, she said, you go around boasting about your look. She said, you can have a stroke tonight. Your face be all crooked tomorrow. <laughs> she said, just create an image for us. You wake up the morning, morning, and your face all twisted. You had a stroke. I said, think about that thing, Jesus. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion has light with darkness? What concord has Christ with Belial or the devil? And what part is he that believeth with the infidel, a heathen? This is what the message translation says. Don't become partners with those who reject God. Partners in marriage, partners in dating relationships, partners in business. 
Don't become partners with those who reject God. How can you make a partnership out of right and wrong? That's not partnership. That's war. Is light best friends with dark? Does Christ go strolling with the devil? Come on, devil. Let's go for a walk. No. Does Christ go strolling with the devil? Do trust and mistrust hold hands? Paul saying, I, I don't see how y'all hooked up. One time I was really baffled by this. I was, I was really baffled. I was really, 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 really baffled by somebody in our church who I thought was a strong spiritual person. They was connected, and they got with somebody who was just like he could take or leave church. I ain't saying he wasn't saved, wasn't involved, wasn't connected, and it just baffled me. And I kept telling Pastor Moss, I said, I don't understand it. She said, she said, sometimes people aren't what you think they are. She said, you thinking that they are spiritual. She said, they may not. Obviously, they're really not. Because who do you get co connected to at your core? That's who you really are. We, again, I, and I've learned this over passing for many years. I didn't always know this because I grew up in church. They would, tell me, they would say, oh, they sure are faithful. And we promoted everybody in the church because they're faithful. When we said faithful, it meant they were present. How many of you know you can be present and not be a good student? <laughs> So we, they, they faithful, they faithful. And I found out, I don't, we don't know these folks. We know the church you. You know the real you. And God knows the real you. And so sometimes who you are attracted to and who you're most comfortable around is a reflection of who you really are. Sometimes you have to change the proximity. If you're going to keep your eyes straight ahead, you have to change the proximity of some of your current relationships because people can mess you up. Galatians 5 and 7, it says, you did run well. Who did, who did hinder you? You were doing good until you got with somebody and messed you up. That can happen with students. That can happen with Christians. I was recently reading something that, that said, said cert, certain things hang out together. He said, usually, uh, I, and I've seen, I, had, I, had, I hadn't personally experienced it, but then I did personally experience it because somebody called me, they've gone through the situation. But, you know, somebody married for years, all of a sudden come home, the wife, uh, father and the wife know everything fine, all of a sudden come, I want a divorce. And where, where did this come from? Okay? If you check it out, they got a friend somewhere around them who's getting divorced. Somebody around them is talking about moving on, leaving their spouse, and so now all of a sudden, it looks like it's more doable because they see somebody else doing it. Don't tell me it don't matter who you're around. Somebody else having an affair and it looked like they're getting away with it. So now you start thinking, well, I, I can get away with it too. Sometimes I change the proximity of some relationship. First Peter 4, 3, 3 and 4. Peter said when you, when you get serious about certain things, uh, sometimes there's got to be a separation. I'm not talking about looking down on people. I'm not talking about judging them. I'm talking about judging yourself. The Bible said, judge yourself whether you be in the faith. I mean, I know what I want God to do in my life, okay? To a lot of you, I have arrived. But I'm like Paul. I have not yet arrived. I press towards the mark. There's a mark. There's a, there's a high calling. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. My family's not there yet. My kids not there yet. Uh, you know, there's greater things to come. And I want to stay on God's path for my life. I want everything to be manifested. I don't want to be shipwrecked. Shipwrecked is you were heading somewhere, but you never reach it. You never reach it because of something along the way that you didn't navigate right through. 1 Peter 4, 3 and 4. Paul, I mean, Peter writes, for in time past of our life, it may have sufficed us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness. And lasciviousness means unrestrained sin. And, and, if, and if you don't understand the message of grace, you think just because Jesus died and going to forgive you, you can do anything you want to do. That's lasciviousness. Nobody who's really saved want to do everything they want to do. I don't, Paul said, Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from body this death? Paul said, no, I don't want to do what I want to do. Because I know the stuff that I want to do is going to mess me up. The stuff I want to do is going to mess up my life. 
It's going gonna, it's gonna to end in a bad place. He said, Lord, deliver me from what I want to do and help me do what you want me to do. He said, in time past, you walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine. I almost wanted to take that out because some of y'all don't know, don't dip to an excess and no says. In, let's forget that part. <laughs> excess of wine, revelings, banqueting, abominable idolatries. He said, wherein they think, the people used to do this with, they think it's strange that you run not with them. What happened? You was my girl. You was my boy. Come on, man, we got high together. You getting all new on me? Come on, we used to drink all the, now you getting all new, you mean sober? <laughs> they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Epic, listen to me. And all the rest of y'all listen to me. Listen, listen to this from the message translation. It says this, you've already put in your time in that God-ignorant way of life. Partying night after night. A drunken and profligate life. He said, just wild, living wild. He said, now it's time to be done with it for good. Who is he talking to up in here? You, you 60 year old, 60 year old, still out there talking, I'm doing a stanky leg. That's the arthritic leg. <laughs> Go sit down somewhere. Just become a good deacon. <laughs> Says, time to be done with it for good. Of course, your old friends don't understand why you don't join in with the old gang anymore. But you don't have to give an account to them. They're the ones who are going to be called on the carpet and before God himself. He says, stop trying to worry about what, tr live your life to please people. If you know God got a plan for your life, he got a purpose for, life, for your life, I got to keep my eyes straight ahead. Now, you can do what you want to do. I mean, I had to make that choice in my own family with my own brothers and sisters. I was, a, I was a boy, I used to come home, they, they used to be, I, I, remember, I remember my brother and sister sitting at the table separating pills and, 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 and separating, uh, uh, um, you know, weed. Don't call reefer no more, right? That's your weed. When you call reefer, you're real old, right? Okay? <laughs> separating the weed. Okay, put in bed. I, I remember, and I remember them trying to get, oh, oh, you, that's right, you can't do this, right? Because you saved, right? My own brothers and sisters who are dead now made fun of me for making different choices. But thank God that I did. And I'm not going to say it was easy. Young people, it's not easy to make different choices when everybody else is doing something else. It's easier if you don't hang with the same friends. So sometimes you got to change the proximity of certain relationships. I don't hang around, I, I don't hang around men who cheated on their wives or, or make fun or, 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 you know, and always talk about other women and all that kind of, kind of stuff. Because you become desensitized to it if that's what you hang around. I have some, I have some, some you know, particular people who are friends of mine, they were friends for you, but, you know, they, they're in ministry, but we, we live different kind of lives, okay? They think it's okay to go gambling at the, at the casinos. First of all, I work too hard for the money. I work hard for it, honey. Okay? And I ain't going to judge them saying they're going to hell and all that kind of stuff. But listen, that ain't what I do. And then, and then, and then see, and then people start judging you, right or wrong, based upon your associations. I told you all years ago, when I first came to this city, you know, the Lord told me, the Lord spoke to me. I didn't know, you know, I just came to the city. The Lord said to me, now, now, don't try to get connected with a bunch of people here because what, that, that's not my plan for you. You know, I came from the city where all the preachers knew each other, hung with everybody. I didn't know anybody here. And so somebody invited me to come to this, this pastor's meeting or whatever, and, uh, and, I, and so here I am. I, I said, well, I can go to this one. And I went there, and I'm sitting there. I'm sitting between two known pastor and whoremongers. One on the left, one on the right. And somebody came and took a picture. Can we take a picture of you? I said, oh, Jesus, Lord, God. 
And the Lord said to me, how'd you like that picture to get out? See, you got to be careful who you hang around. You know, some, some, of, y'all, some of y'all on Facebook, you wasn't, you wasn't doing the same thing, but you, you were there. Mm-hmm. They all got their drink up in the air. You got something behind your hand. <laughs> Let me read this and be done. I said, sometimes you got to change the proximity because you're, you want to walk in the fullness of the blessings of God in your life. So you got to keep your eyes straight ahead and don't even, listen, don't get moved by people even who get offended. I told you years ago, somebody, I was working through something, somebody got offended, you know, with Pastor Dollar and they, they only kept calling me. I said, no, 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 I, I, I didn't want to talk to them. Because I knew all they're going to do is spew, spew their offense. And we was cool up until that point because I made a decision. If I had to make a decision, it's him or my pastor, then it's, go- then it's going to be my pastor. Oh, y'all quiet. Mm-hmm. Because some of y'all, y'all ain't that loyal. I said, no, we, we was, to, to this day, we see, we, we see each other. But, but no, I'm, 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 I'm not going, I'm not doing that. This is what happened in Numbers 16. In Numbers 16, the you know, Dathan and Byron, they got offended with Moses. They got offended with Moses. They said, who do you think you are? You ain't the only one to hear God. We all hear God. And then, then he said, the people are saying. Now, how many of y'all know when somebody comes and say the people are saying, that means you've been talking to the people. You all realize, you know, theologians tell us a third of the angels went, went with Lucifer, which means, as far as I know, they didn't have no email in heaven, right? So, so the, the devil, he must be having some meetings. He'd been talking to some people that a third of them would get with him. It wasn't, that wasn't just an emotional thing. I'm leaving y'all. I'm leaving heaven. Y'all won't come with me. No, there's been some meetings going on. Years ago, right over in um, um, our building there at 1230, our, our epic building, you know, th- those white letters that in front of them said right direction, what it said, you send it, children send it, whatever it says. But there was a man, he was, he, the man who was coming to put those letters on ha- happened to be a man who was going to a particular a church here in town that has since folded. That church was one of the fastest progressing churches in this city, and it since, it since has folded. First they went, they, they went to a big building, then they went back to their small building. Now they don't even exist anymore, as far as I know. But I remember him saying, he said, well, what, what kind of church is this? I said, well, it's not, not that I'm in this with church. He said, you believe in the Holy Ghost? I said, yeah. He said, well, because, you know, I go over there to such and such church, but Sunday it's about 50 of us that's leaving. There's 50 of y'all leaving, huh? Not I'm leaving. There's 50. What does that mean? Come on, talk to me. There's a whole bunch of people. There's a whole sect of this church of, 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 of these people who are talking, and we all leaving together. Number 16, verse 20. The Lord spake to Moses and Aaron after he said he's going to judge Korodathan and Byron. And he said, verse 21, separate yourselves from among this congregation. Do you all see that? Separate yourselves from among what? This congregation. Even in the congregation, some of you all need to realize there's some people you need to separate yourself from. He said that I may consume them in a moment. God said, I'm about to judge them. And he's speaking to the congregation saying, depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. He said, stop going to their house. <laughs> if I was your, I wouldn't be up in their house. He said, depart from the tents of these wicked men. Touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. It wasn't even their sin. He said, you can get caught up in their sin. You're not doing it. You're not saying it. You're not acting out. But you're hanging around the ones who do. Sometimes it's hard to stay focused when there are so many distractions around you. Friends, social media, entertainment, and more. However, you can live righteously and make the things of God a priority if you keep your eyes straight ahead. Dr. Herbert Bailey helps you to develop tunnel vision and keep the good life that God has for you in clear view. Get these resources today for your love gift of $20 or more. Just call 1-877-798-LIFE or go online to rightdirection.info. 
ask for Eyes Straight Ahead. God created us to win. I've been created with the attributes of God. I've been created with the DNA of God. God created you to dominate. God created you to win, and then he blessed you and enabled you to do what he created you to do. What the enemy wants me to believe is my reality. It's not my reality. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? This thing that you're walking through right now is not the final chapter of your life. But Joshua spake for his whole household. He said, for as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Because I'm here to tell you that when men connect, they will not only have enough for the rest, they will not only have enough for women and children, but they will leave a legacy and a multiplication for the children that come after them. And what was just enough for him, he'll put it in the hand of somebody else. It'll multiply and become more than enough. Because sometimes God just needs one person to say, I still believe God. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care how long we've been in this situation. I don't care where we come from. I believe God. And if God, sometimes God just needs one believer in the house. Because somebody shout, I believe God. Man, God wants you to stand up. Right Direction Church International Men's Conference 2015, June 19th and 20th. I am man. Next time on Daily Direction. If I don't see grace, I can't receive that because I say, no, nah, I can't be the head. I can't, I can't be the, I can't be the head and not the tail because see, I sinned and I remember what I did in my past. That's because I haven't received the abundance of, of grace yet. But when I receive the abundance of grace, I say, no, I'm the righteous of God. I sit in heavenly place with Christ Jesus. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. And watch it. And I don't have a sin conscience that makes me not receive that. Because as long as you have a sin conscience, it causes you not to receive your status in God. If you are in our area, come join us at one of our three locations. In Columbia, South Carolina, Sunday morning worship is at 7.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Wednesday Bible study is at 12 noon and 7 p.m. Friday, women's Bible study is at 12 noon. Our worship center is located at 3506 Broad River Road in Columbia. In Orangeburg, South Carolina, join us with campus pastors Trey and Katie Brave for Sunday morning worship at 10.30 a.m. and Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. We're located at 990 Willington Drive in Orangeburg. In Florence, South Carolina, join us with campus pastors Dwayne and Denise White for Sunday morning worship at 10.30 a.m. and Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. We're located at 1507 King Avenue in Florence. Please email your testimonies to praise report at rightdirection.info or letters can be mailed to P.O. Box 21672, Columbia, South Carolina 29221. Please consider partnering with us or send a one-time financial gift. For more information, visit our website at rightdirection.info or call us toll free at 877-798-5433. Right Direction Ministries, empowering people and changing generations.